Hi everyone. Uh, today um, I wanted to share with you some work that I am doing on a big GHC refactor. Um, and I've hit a bug and I thought it might be fun to explore that bug together. I really don't know what's going to happen in this bug. This might be interesting, it might be boring, we'll see. Um, uh, but first, let me tell you uh, a little bit what I'm doing. So the work I'm doing is on the WIP derived refactor pat, uh, branch, I should say. Um, and the idea here is that I want to make a, what, what should be a vast simplification to GHC. Um, so, so today, uh, GHC supports um, three different kind of sort of constraints in its constraint solver. We can have givens G, wanted W. Those two are fairly straightforward. The idea is that at any moment we know some facts. We may know that ORD A holds or that um, you know A equals some, some type variable A equals um, either B, C or something like that. Those could be givens. Wanted are also fairly straightforward. These are things that we need to prove in order for our uh, expression to type check. But there's this other category in GHC called derived D. And these are kind of like wanted, but if we don't prove them in the end, it's okay. Um, and they originated from functional dependencies. They're used for a couple of other things. Uh, but in, in the end, they, they mean that now we have this third category, and they're not so terribly useful. The biggest thing that they do is they help us produce better error messages. Um, because, despite rumors out there, we actually, we in GHC, really care about our error messages. Um, and, and so th we have this whole system to support better error messages, but I think there is a better way um, uh, than what we have now. So the goal here is not to improve the error messages, which would be very nice, but instead vastly simplify the internals of GHC without making error messages worse. So that's, that's what we're after. Um, so to give an example of, of, of what I mean by this, um, suppose I have some type family FA, uh, and I have no equations for this yet. And then um, I have x is f car, x is true, and then y is also f car, y equals um, some some int. So so clearly, so I don't know what f car is, right? So, uh, so f is a type family, it's a type function. So f car could be int, it could be bool, I don't know which. Um, but it would be really bad if in the process of, of type checking this, we're going to end up with a wanted f car equals a bool, and we're going to get another wanted f car equals int. And so we might imagine um, then GHC simplifying these to a wanted int equals bool. And it's really quite a shame if we report to the user, can't match int with bool, right? X and Y might be defined very far apart in a module. They might be buried inside of other functions. These could be, the, the, there's no reason to think that these two things should interact. And yet, depending on how we structure the program, we, if we didn't have this, this derived um, feature, we, we, GHC would do this. As it turns out, GHC is clever enough not to, I, I'm not going to really explain exactly how it uses derives, but it uses derives in a very critical fashion um, uh, in order to do this. So my new approach is is not to use derives, but instead sort of remember when this happens. The, the key problem that we're encountering here is something called a wanted rewriting a wanted, right? We shouldn't use, say, this constraint to rewrite that constraint to be bool equals int. We should say, well, we don't know that this is true, so so we're not going to um, we're not going to use uh, use one wanted to rewrite another. Um, and uh, so the approach that I'm taking in this patch is instead of allowing, or rather, instead of preventing wanted from rewriting wanted, it's to record every time this happens and to sort of preserve an, uh, the error message before the wanted rewrote the wanted so that if we do in the end have to print something out, we'll print out something sensible. We're not going to really, I don't think, look at that part of it uh, today, but that's that's what we're after. So this is a, the goal is to remove derives. I haven't actually pulled out derived um, from my branch, although they're unused, so I can't tell you how many thousands of lines of code will be saved, but I think it will be in the thousands. Um, so that's really good. Um, uh, but but right now I have a in my branch of GHC derived still exists, but they're totally unused. 
Um, it's, it's just dead. It's all a hu huge pile of dead code. Um, but I don't want to pull it out until I'm absolutely sure that we're not going to get any type uh, error regressions. Okay, so that's the warm up. Let's now take a look at the specific bug that I've hit. Um, and again, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll, we'll all explore together. So this was uh, during routine um, uh, checking. I ignore all of this compilation going on over here. That's not very interesting. Um, so during, during, during routine uh, CI, this test case 14230A failed. And it failed in an annoying way. Um, so it failed with an actual assertion uh, failure here. So let's, let's actually see um, what happened. So this assert failed uh, on, on some line. So before we even get to that line, let's look at this. This is index types should fail to T14230A. Okay, so let's go find that. Go into the test suite, test index types should fail T14230A. Can't forget the A. Oh, yay! This is a nice simple test case. Sometimes they're very long and very annoying. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. And this caused an assertion failure in zonk.hs, line 1838. So let's take a look at zonk, ghc, tc, utils. Zonk, what did I say? 1838. Um, okay, uh, so let's see. Oh, this is zonking an unfilled coercion hole. Hmm, that's very bad. So a coercion hole is, is what we use to store. So a coercion is a proof that two types are equal. And um, what we do is when we're when we're going to prove later that two types are equal because we ha we don't know it yet we create this thing called a coercion hole and then the solver goes and fills in the coercion hole if the solver runs into trouble it should report an error um, but somehow this program it doesn't report the error but instead tries to go on and and sort of finish compilation even though there's there's an unsolved equality so we said that you know a equal need, needed to equal bool but it, it doesn't um, and, and yet we're not reporting an error. So that's bad. Um, so let's see, can we spot the error in the program? Um, well, I can cheat. I can just compile it using whatever GHC is installed on my computer. Okay, so line 13, expected kind K arrow star, but A has kind star. Well, A doesn't have kind star, oh, but maybe it should here. So here, oh, it says A has kind K. So this, oh, this must be a polykinded type class. And then here A has kind K. But then down here, th we're doing an instance where the kind is actually star. So this really should be star. And I don't think this should be A. This should really be maybe A. So this is just wrong in many different ways. OK, it's good when they're wrong in many different ways somehow. Um, somehow that makes it easier. So, so we see this, we're getting that, we're, we're, and then we're somehow not getting that error on my branch, and, and that's the problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this same uh, compilation with ddump tc trace, and this gives me very verbose output. Um, let's see, I'd like to keep some stuff open on the window here, so put this in my scratch buffer. Okay. So, oh good, this is only 2,000 lines of output. That's not so bad. Um, so then the question is, which, uh, so this is, uh, as, I was, as I was saying, very verbose output that's really only meant for debugging the, the type checker here. Um, so the problem is the coercion named AHO. So I just have to look for AHO. Here we go. So AHO is a proof that star equals star arrow star. Well, I certainly hope we can't prove that. Um, but then the real question is, why don't we report that as an error? So this, this sort of goes through. No one's going to be able to solve that, blah, 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 blah. Now, here we get into error reporting. Um, so we're calling report unsolved. And these are all of the things that are unsolved. So Aho here, including a whole bunch of others, they're all actually, or not all of them, they're the same, but many of them are this same problem because this is a very broken program. 
Um, ignoring a constraint. Well, that might be something. But now so report wanted. Report wanted suppressed. So we're going to report these. That this looks very promising. It looks like we're going to report something. Um, so we're going to make eek, but it says suppress here. Why does it say suppress? So this is all code from, oops, ghc, compiler, ghc, tc, errors, muck eek error one, prints out the item, but it's a suppressed item. Oh, so on try reporters, oh, so all of these are being labeled with suppress. That's bad. Why are we suppressing all of these? So this suppression has to do with what I was talking about toward the beginning, that there's some errors that are good errors that we want to present to the user. And there are some errors that are only coming up because of this wanted rewriting wanted stuff. Um, and, and we don't want to report those. So somehow we came in with a bunch of these errors, but then they all got labeled suppress. So how did that happen? So this happens in muck error item. Um, and we can see with my git gutter that there's there's been action around here. So let's see. Something about ignoring, oh, ignoring constraints. That happened. So this is an Ahsoak fam pat origin. That comes up when we have an associated type family, which is what we have in this test case, uh, that whose, um, whose type variable didn't match what we were expecting. So it says it says that it's going to ignore this. C note constraints to ignore. Oh, so here's note constraints to ignore. Um, it looks like I just wrote this, except actually I wrote it about a month ago, so I totally forget it right now. So let's read it together. So some constraints are meant only to aid the solver by unification. A failure to solve them is not necessarily an error to report to the user. But this one is. This one really is. The constraints to ignore are... Uh, oh, ah, so, okay, hmm, so this, this constraint, it's actually okay because what's about to happen is there's another check after we're done type checking to make sure that, um, that the associated type instance matches up with, with its, with its template. So I think if we somehow just didn't assert, uh, then we would be okay. I don't actually think that's a good solution to the problem. But um, let's just try that just to see what happens. So I've commented out the assert, and I think nothing else bad will happen. That's my, that's my hypothesis. Um, which all that means is that, is that maybe this assert is, is sort of overplaying, or maybe we don't want to assert in this particular case, or maybe we want to actually report an error differently. I don't know exactly what the real solution is going to be. Um, but let's, let's see, does that solve the problem? Ah, no, there's another assertion failure behind the first one. Ah, oh, that's not what I wanted. What if I don't print out the trace? Just this is just out of curiosity. No, then it still happens. So this is an assert in family uh, instance family line 165. Let's see if we get any uh, instance family 165. Um. Oh and oh oh. This is this is a very similar assertion kind of thing. I think I think I still think we're going to end up reporting an error. Um, I label things that I need to come back to with 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 my initials. And let me actually before I get too far away from this, let me also label this so I make sure to come back and either fix the problem or re or uncomment that or something. Okay, so we've commented out the second assertion failure. Oh, and then we have these silly unused things. Um, unused things, unused things. Oh, they're down here. What was it? It was LHS and presumably RHS are unused. Okay, that's fine. That will squash those. Okay, and it's building. And hopefully after it builds, 
we will see something interesting. Or rather, again, we're hoping to see an error, a nice, beautiful error message, not a panic. Oh, now what? Now it's on line 165. Oh, did I comment out the wrong one? I may have commented out the wrong one. Let's comment that one out as well. Oh, now there's more. Th oh, this is terrible. TCV set and PPX. Well, it's telling me that these asserts are there's they're quite a lot of work. They don't they don't actually happen in production versions of GHC. So this isn't slowing your GHC down. It's just slowing my GHC down. Um, okay, let's see. Ah, that's the nice, beautiful error that I wanted to see. And in fact, if I run this as a test, it will compare this error output against the expected error output. Oh, they're different, but they're 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 quite similar. I'm quite happy with that new output. Okay, so that tells me that these these assertions, we don't really need to use them here, but we're going to trip them anyway. Um, hmm. I don't have a good solution for that off the top of my head. So I'm going to scratch my head a little bit off camera and and see see what I get to, and then I will check back in with you in a little bit. Okay, so after thinking for a little bit about the problem, I think the best solution here is just to remove these asserts for good. Um, let me explain why I think this is is, is a reasonable solution. Um, so so it, what's interesting here is is that there are comments near the asserts telling me not to do this, right? Um, originally, I put in a panic here, but that caused too many uses of fail if errorsm, which which sort of aborts. Uh, compilation midstream. So this is suggesting that that um, this case should not just fall over, right? Um, and in the and and in in the case in point, we have a program that has an unfilled coercion hold. This is bad, but we're going to error later, um, and and that's and that's exactly what what this is meant. Um, uh, th this is meant to trigger only if we're not going to error later, but we don't sort of know that yet. So easy solution. There we go. We just delete the sum asserts. Um, then we also go over to this file here, where there were some asserts that I had to comment out to be able to get through all of this. But then look, there's a comment right here. We used to have an assertion that the tie vars of the RHS were bound by TCV set, blah, 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 blah. And look, somehow the assertion came back and did not delete the comment, because clearly this is um, uh, this I'm not the first person to, to stumble over this. And indeed, a later check and check valid famine st still rejects it. So um, we're going to remove these asserts as well, which means then we can remove all of these extra definitions down here. Okay, so with that, I recompile, which should hopefully be pretty quick because I don't think there's any changes. Oh, no, I removed some of those uh, uh, unused variables, so maybe that causes some recompilation. Strange. Um, okay, and now I try to compile and we get a nice error message. I run the tests. We get a nice error message there, and then I'm just going to accept that one, two, one, four, two, three, O, oh, A. I have a little script accept that does all the necessary stuff. Great. So now the new error message is accepted because I'm looking at it and it's a, it's just a fine error message. This this gets across um, uh, what we what we need to say. It, it gives us expected. It gives us actual. Very good. Um, okay. So we've we've fixed one bug. Now on to the next. But I think we'll I'll do that offline. Thanks for watching.